Welcome back to Project 613. Today we learn all about the non-Jewish servant, known in the Torah as the Evet Kenani, commonly translated as the Gentile slave. However, it needs to be stated right from the get-go that as far as the Torah is concerned, a non-Jewish servant, or the slave as commonly known, was not allowed to be treated as was common for slaves to be treated at that time. And therefore, the Torah tells us that we are not allowed to abuse, humiliate, or mistreat our non-Jewish servants. We have to make sure that they are fed and clothed in the same way that we would feed and clothe our own family. In fact, our sages used to make sure that their servants, their non-Jewish servants, had their meals even before they themselves or their family would sit down to eat. In the words of Maimonides, they are here to serve us, not to be humiliated by us. Now that said, there are three specific mitzvot in regard to the non-Jewish servant that we learn today. And that is number one, the terms of the non-Jewish servant. And that is that unlike when it comes to the Jewish servant who serves for a fixed term of six years, with the non-Jewish servant, the Torah tells us, Le'olam bahem ta'avodu, their term is forever. Once one acquires a non-Jewish servant, he should try, stick with him for as long as possible and not to dismiss him. The only exception to that would be if the owner inflicts an injury, if the master inflicts an irreversible injury on his non-Jewish uh, servant. For example, if he knocks a tooth out or knocks his eye out or causes any other kind of irreversible injury to any organ of his body, then he would be released automatically. There are other details and conditions of when the non-Jewish servant is released. In fact, once the non-Jewish servant is released, he actually becomes a fully fledged member of the Jewish community and is considered fully Jewish because even before, even beforehand, even while being a servant, he was already obligated to keep a certain amount of the mitzvot. But once he is freed, then he would be obligated to keep all of the mitzvot of the Torah and would be considered a Jew like all other. The second mitzvah that we learned today is that in the event that a non-Jewish servant from outside of the land of Israel escapes and tries to find refuge in the land of Israel, we are to welcome him in, we are to facilitate for his refuge, and we are forbidden from returning him to his master. Rather, we have to allow him to live like one of us in the land of Israel and not to give him back to continue to live like a slave again. The uh, verse says, Lo Tazgir Eved Ladonav. One should not give back this servant to his master. Of course, he would have to pay any money that he owes to his master for the time that he would have had that he would have had to serve, which now he isn't, but we are not allowed to give him back to his master. And the third and final mitzvah that we learned today is that this runaway slave who came to find refuge in the land of Israel, it is forbidden to verbally harass him, to verbally abuse him and cause him anguish in this way. As the verse clearly says, Lo ta'anenu, it is forbidden for us to cause this slave verbal anguish. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.